All right. Welcome to another exciting video, guys. I'm really excited for this one. I think y'all are going to enjoy it uh, just based on the response and the likes from that little intro that we did with Mr. Antonio here. So I want to do an interview. Today, we're going to dive into uh, just the real life adventures of someone who's taken that huge leap um, you know, fortunately, somewhat inspired by by this platform right here, right, um, <laughs> to, to, to to head overseas. So, you know, I'm really thrilled to, to have this this special reference, which was something that um, you know we just ran into each other while I was in in Medellin, and and now he is the proud owner of a very thriving uh, protein shop located in one of the hottest areas in Medellin. Um, and I was very proud to find out that he was one of the owners and an investor in the in the deal, uh, but also just excited that he just has some some really uh, huge plans for the future. And, you know, we'll talk about kind of doing business internationally. They were going to talk about uh, some of the lifestyle aspects of moving overseas to a country uh, like Colombia and just get into his story. So, uh, I, I mean, there's probably no better place to start than just talking about what inspired you because we talked on the last one of just like your concept of hey i know i want to live overseas um but what inspired you to choose medellin specifically really uh the thriving culture i love medellin for the, the ambiance as well it's very green it's very deep green you know you kind of feel like you're always in the jungle vibe vacation uh, vibe as well but uh, really just uh, economic opportunities as well. It's a growing place. Uh, more, more tourists are coming there. They're getting past their past stereotype of what they were that we don't talk about. But you're seeing more and more people from other locations as well. When you talk to the Pisces, what they're called in uh, Medellin, they'll tell you, hey, at first, there was just a few Americans that were coming here, a few people from France. Now they're saying that, hey, for, well, fast forward to the year 2024, you have people all over the world. So you have people from Russia, you have people from Turkey coming by. Australia is a big uh, impact for society here. Uh, Israel, uh, people from America, just like me and uh, other people who are watching as well. So it's a growing market and, you know, uh, just me turning myself into a business or into a person where you always want to pay attention to the future, what's going on. You want to invest in the way it's at the top. But right now we're we're seeing it uh, grow more and more and more. So I think it's a perfect time for me, you know, to set my roots in a place and actually put on the freelance adventures like you inspired me to do sitting back in my home watching you <laughs> back in the day so when, when was your first trip to Medellin it was uh back in March of 2022 yes yeah, so oh wow okay cool so you moved quickly then you moved quickly yeah I moved <laughs> yeah right after the acid yeah this is the place <laughs> But uh, I mean, it was the same for me. Uh, you know, I, my first time, I specifically remember I had a buddy uh, who had been living uh, here in Medellin and I was in Asia at this point. And so this is back like 2016, 17. And um, he had been telling me like, All right, you gotta come, you gotta come and visit this place. But it was, I'm the same as, as a lot of people back then, more people have heard about it now, but you know, Narcos was the hottest, TV program popping at yeah. that point. I'm like, dude, I'm not going to Medellin, man. <laughs> man yeah. And then the things that people were going there for were like, he's like, dude, I don't do cocaine. I don't want to. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> well, I'm not, what, what am I going down there for? But it was his, so finally, he had been telling me this for like a couple of years. I needed to visit, I need to visit. And so finally, it was his 40th birthday. He's like, man, you got to come. You got to come down for my 40th. It's going to be so much fun, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, man. And so I remember, you know, I wake up. It's a long flight. Uh, I was in Vietnam at that point. Uh -huh. so it's a long flight, dog. Uh, and I remember the alarm going off. And I'm just laying in bed like, I need to, I got to text this dude and tell him I ain't going to make it. I was just dreading that flight. So, and then just to get to like South America, to Asia, it's just extra crazy. So uh, end up taking the flight get to Medellin um, and, you know, we do like all the things, Provenza, we go over to Viva Megado and just like the whole thing. And we're walking back to my, uh, my place at the, at the end of the night. He's like, so what do you think about Medellin, man? Your first time, first day here. Like, what do you think? It's like, 
dude, I think I'm moving here. <laughs> and then, you oh, know, there you go. I'll see you I went from like, I don't even want to visit to like, oh, I'm I'm making plans in the morning <laughs> to, to move here. So I, I get you. Like once once you get uh, the, the sense there and just getting plugged in and, and all those things um, um, make, make a huge, huge difference. Um, so talk about uh, any of the challenges that, that you went through trying to go back and think, Ooh. all right, you know, what did it look like to actually make that move? Oh, are you talking about specifically the biggest challenges while living here? Like being, yeah, just the moving. First time? it's just, oh, you were, you were, right. you, you went through, you had the trip, you came down, you visited 22 and now you're, you're like, all right, I want to move here. Like what, what was your situation? Like, were you working? um you know what what it looked like for you to move yeah um so at first you know i was working just in my own little small startup so i was in a remote position at first uh, i had a great opportunity to be a master or a shmi what we call it or something about an expert in logistics and operations and you know i got a taste of uh, living abroad this is during the covid uh, era so you know a lot of the people were getting online jobs offices didn't want to have people but, you know, uh, I took advantage of that. I wanted to see, I wanted to say, hey, like, let me go ahead and start my exploring chapter of my life. And um, I went and found a medicine with a friend of mine. And yes, I did fall in love really quick. And I would say, for this fast forwarding to the part of, you know, actually picking up and moving, uh, finding Airbnb, obviously, Airbnb surfing is the first thing you want to do just to find out which part of the cities you want to be and you don't want to commit too fast. And I see the biggest challenge. And I tell all my friends, anybody who's curious of coming down here is just the language barrier. It is what it is. You know, uh, being able to talk to people and let them know like, hey, I'm a human being. You know, I'm not just some foreigner just coming here trying to throw in bubble. I'm actually here to, to uh, I'm actually here to try to actually, you know, relate to you, gain trust. You know what I mean? Uh, actually show them I want to be part of the community. So they're accepting more. That's how you learn stuff. Being amongst the people and actually uh, mingling with them and gaining trust as well. It's only going to open up doors for you. So I would say my biggest challenge is just uh, keep it uh, on point is that it's the language barrier. It was talking to people like, hey, I want to do this, where I do that at, you know what I mean? Uh, a lot of times I had too much pride of using my translator on uh, Google to let people know I don't know the language. So I was very uh, comfort, I was very comfortable with failing, you know, looking like an idiot, you know, and it's, that's, that's what everybody does. Whenever you're first starting out something, every expert at one time is an idiot starting out. And so I didn't have the fear of talking to people and, you know, just say, okay, next conversation needs to be more deeper, learn about this subject and everything like that. So I eventually migrated towards business, asking them, hey, if I wanted to do X, Y, Z, who would I talk to? What type of lawyer would I need in Spanish? You know what I mean? Because the people here know mm. the best, you know, ways to move. So uh, being around those circles and having people, you know, trusting me, seeing me, you know, hey, this guy's relatable, you know, he's from another part of the world. You know what I mean? Uh, letting them know that, hey, I'm one of you guys. They were able to coach me and uh, led me to a uh, way smoother path than a lot of other people who invest here as well. So, uh, so that's one of my biggest things for people. How did you learn the language? Oh, I was just out every day, man. I was talking to people. Um, my okay. biggest trick for anybody is that if you're going to take an Uber ride, these people are very friendly. So this is one of the reasons why I moved to Medellin too as well, is that you can't go nowhere without saying buenos dias, uh, como estas, or buenas noches, the awkward silence. And the elevator that we're used to in the United States is just, you know, sitting there in silence, not saying nothing to nobody. They don't do that. They say, hola, como estas? So you automatically have, like, a free ticket for a conversation. There's some really peculiar And bye. They, they, like, tell you bye yeah. when you're there. Yeah. Like, in the U.S., you just silent. <laughs> yeah, so it's, a, it's an opportunity to, you know, practice your Spanish because they're obviously saying it with a smile. It's very uh, inviting to just, you know, talk about a certain topic, saying, hey, uh, where are you from? Growing from that, saying, hey, what do you do? Growing from that. Hey, where can I get this? You know what I mean? It's like you just start building, building more in confidence. So that was just me. I was talking in the street. I didn't take no classes, um, nothing like that. I was on YouTube listening to, I guess, like music a lot, leading the the letters, which That's is good. kind of lyrics of the words. But just uh, just being out there every day, just trying to be funny because they respect you. Anybody in the world is going to respect you know, especially American because we have this um, conception. I couldn't say misconception. We have this conception of you know when we go places, we kind of expect people to talk in our language and i want to know that hey i'm one of those guys that you know i want to be here and like grow and help us you know i want to call this my home so i let them know that hey i want to learn can you help me out and they're very open because they love to practice their english back to you as well so that was yeah. my opportunity to learn so what one of the questions that comes up a lot is you know right now 
um, there, there are a lot of folks that are talking about the the dangers of, you know, the drugging, <laughs> robbing and, and those kinds of things. And, you know, I think anywhere you go, you've got to take safety precautions. Um, have you yeah. heard stories that, like that? Like, what are you, what, how have you kind of navigated that just being somebody who, um, you know, is learning to, to how to move in the, in the country? I would say overall, you know, my dad taught me, uh, you know, a great thing, you know, just play stupid games, no surprises, but that's not for all uh, aspects of what happens right here. You can move perfectly and just things just happen. And I tell you all the time, it's the same thing in the United States. You can go to any city. If you're in uh, Baltimore, if you are in Miami, downtown at three o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, anywhere around the world isn't a great time to, you know, you know be, be safe, you know, be aware of everything. That's what games I'm playing. So I tell you a lot of times that, you know, um, try to mirror what the locals uh, do or how they dress. Every country that I've been to, I try to dress down to what the locals are wearing. So here they're very big on, you know, wearing pants all the time. So yeah. it's really important to try to blend in. If you blend in and, you know, you do what the locals do, a lot of locals, they don't, they're not out at night, you know, just saw the party block drunk, you know, because they know what it, you know what the culture is. That's just not how you move. And I wouldn't encourage yeah. any man around the world, outside of your home, if you know it 100% to move like that. In a lot of cases, that's what's happened. People get too comfortable and don't realize that, hey, while you're on vacation, other people are literally living real life out here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just what it's not a resort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Not... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, yeah. I, I give my friends uh, kind of the rundown. Anytime somebody's coming down, it's like, okay, here are kind of the rules of Medellin and, and how to move. But And that's one of the things, like literally how to dress, you know, is, is, is something yeah. that is important. So when you've got free time, I know, you know, you're making moves, you're hustling, but, you know, a lot of people want to know, like, what is it like in my free time? Like, how do I enjoy being in imaging when I'm not somebody who's just there for a week? I'm partying. I'm kind of doing that, that whole scene. And I think for both of us, that just isn't our scene. We both live kind of uh, a, when we're in Medellin, like away from uh, where most of the the gringos, as they say, hang out. Um, so talk talk a little bit about that. I would say just uh, depends on what you like. So for me, I love sports. Uh, try to find yourself involved in the community. Um, I like to pass my time as well networking within the, there's a lot of intelligent people here who do businesses around the world as well. So being in spaces where they're locally at, uh, it's like, uh, cigar lounges, you can find uh, tennis courts as well. Just you know, a time to pass by. Um, the city's beautiful. There's a lot of meter doors around here. So meter doors are just places high up in the hills. You can see around the whole valley, you know what I mean? Have a nice uh, sangria pastime and meet some quality people as well. So not not everything needs to be, you know, let's go to Parque Edis and just, you know, lose our mind. There's a lot of beautiful things around the city too. Go to Pueblos. You can actually hang around the parks. I actually I actually like to pass my time sitting down and talking to the people as well. Mm. People like to hang out a lot in their family groups. So, you know, just uh, walking around the block outside of your house, you can take a left or a right. People will always say, you know, hey, how you doing? Hola, como estas? And just say something back. A lot of times they'll invite you, you know, if they're just sitting down, like, you're walking around at night in a nice neighborhood, they'll just sit down and I ask you to come by and drink, get to know you. We're very curious about, you know, if you're a foreigner, like, what is it like being on this? So it's a, it's a very open and community thing that I feel like we were missing as well in the United States. And that's a great time. That's a great way to pass your time too as well. If you're not into the whole party in life. There's a whole other side of that too. You can definitely uh, have fun with that. But yeah, yeah. I, like I, I said, I just yeah, experiencing. Yeah, I've got friends that are killing it at both killing it at, at business and you know going really hard partying and yeah, you can do both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not my thing. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. so what, you know, going into that person, that, that personal life side of things, you know, I obviously have most of my subscribers. It's like, I do get 85% men. I wish I could get a few more women. Uh, but they're going to know, like, they're going to want to know what's it like dating. You know what I mean? Columbia oh, is okay. for beautiful women. So talk, yeah. talk about dating, man. What, what's that been like in, in Medellin? Man, uh, all I can say is, uh, you know, be safe. You know, there's a lot of options out here. The women are very uh, beautiful and inviting. It's about, you know, making that connection too as well. So I tell people all the time, my friends come down here like, hey, man, the women, blah, 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 the women, blah, blah, blah. I tell them, hey, at the latest, at the latest, I'm sorry, at the least, can you try to say some Spanish phrases? Because one thing a lot of people do make a mistake of, is which they don't know, which is a little secret tip, is that they often used to uh, use the translator. 
But doing that, there's already a kind of a misconception growing about, you know, just foreigners coming here, just trying to find a woman and leave them, that all. If you talk to a girl as a foreigner, you know, you know what I mean? And I think you just try to have a Spanish conversation so you're not letting everybody around her know that, hey, you're a foreigner trying to pick up a cute Colombian chick. They will fall for you like that. Yeah. Like they, will, they will, like, talk to you. You know what I mean? So, like, wow, like, this guy's not a stereotypical gringo. He's just not here just, you know, trying to sign off. Red is he to do whatever he wants, you know what I mean? He actually, yeah. you know, is a cool person. And the girls here are very, they're very soft and very sweet. Once you just, you know, get to know them, break that little, you know, particular barrier of you being a foreigner. Oh man, you can go on dates. Uh, let's know. You can blow out your whole schedule. So I had to actually slow down and uh, not uh, participate. <laughs> not, I'm not chasing. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Yeah, that's that's, that's one out. of the yeah. toughest yeah. things. Like, yo, yeah, man. I'm used to being in, in the U.S. where like, yeah. you know, everybody is is really hustling. I mean, I think, you know, I, I did a video recently where people uh, talk kind of bad about the women in the U.S., but it's like, dog, like the way that system is set up, everybody has to hustle. That's the way the yeah. build, the, the, the whole yeah. business of America has, has been built, especially more so the last like 50 years than, you know, 1900s to, to 1960. Um, so, you know, you come to an, a lot of these different, and there, there's not just Columbia, there's a lot of different countries where, um, I think living is a priority and, and that's what I think is a big shift for us. It's like the priority in America is money. And the funny thing oh, is man, like, man. especially once you realize that they print tr trillions of it, <laughs> it's just at the, yeah. at the flip of a coin. It's like, wait a minute, are you going to really sacrifice your life for this thing that they're, they're, they're printing at will? Um, yeah. at, at will, you're going to uh, uh, sacrifice your life for a, a few hundred thousand of it. So, you know, you come to these other places where they are, well, a lot of the people are way poorer than most Americans. But, you know, one of the things I love, and it's kind of like what you're saying in, in a way is, you know, you go out and they're not just head down full of anxiety and stress and like wow. misery and, and all that. Like they understand that like, no, life is for living, no matter what my situation is, like, Yes. Life is for, for living and enjoying and, and that kind of thing. And I think that is one of the most refreshing things about just getting out of America. And that's not even just Colombia. and definitely not even better. It's like just getting out of America, you realize like, oh, like you don't have to just be uh, in, in this aggressive hustle mode uh, in, in order to have life. And one of the things that, that I love is, you know, you see the kids, you see the adult, like the joy even is just a joy that you go to some of the richest neighborhoods in America and you will not see. <laughs> yep. Love it, love it, man. So when it comes to business, let's talk about some of the cultural barriers or cultural differences, you know, you invest in, in this deal. Uh, you know, what what are, what 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 has that been like? Yeah, it was a, a learning lesson, you know what I mean? Like I said, you can't be yeah. afraid of a failure looking stupid. It's starting the wheels, keeping them rolling. So really, like I said, it's just the language barrier as well. It's different between having you know, conversational Spanish and then you're having you know, a whole mindset for probably just flirtatious Spanish. But then you have to actually think about, okay, how am I going to do business Spanish? How am I going to talk to these guys and let them know, like, hey, I can actually like articulate you know, math about what I want to do and let you know, hey, I know numbers too as well. Because it's just an automatic, you know, thing of, you know, you being a foreigner, they see that plus one number on your phone, X, Y, Z, they automatically think you're a millionaire or you don't need to be doing, uh, you don't need this right now. You know, uh, that's just a little learning curve. Like I said, whenever you're just going to a whole nother culture and you expect there's always going to be like, you know, just a little clash of misunderstanding, which is natural. But yeah, overall doing business, I would say a big thing that you would have to know here, I'm pretty sure you know too as well, is that you have to have patience. You have that patience. That's, this yeah, is, it's go. different. It's different. Like, you know, we're, we're from the States. You know, if you want my money, come get this right now. You know what I mean? Or I'm going to get you the paper. <laughs> exactly. exactly. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a pro that's and a con, that, right? There's a pro and a con, yeah. too. Like, things yeah, big are pro. efficient and move because people are so money hungry. It's like, yo, if you got the money, yeah, okay, let's make this happen. Uh, when you get to a place that isn't like that, then, you know, things are going to move a little slower. Yeah, right. Man. Like, you know, you try you try doing business on the holiday here. I'm uh, pretty sure you know what that's like. You know, what I mean? the banks close around middle day, like what? You know, in America, you never think well, you never and, and it, you also have to set a context for the number of holidays that they have. <laughs> you know, like yes. we yes. even, I, I I mean it may be 30 like holidays where the whole like everything just closes uh a year, yep. you know. 
So and one of the highest holiday counts in the world. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So it does. It, it goes to that whole thing of you know adapting to that that culture of like not being as aggressive. And so there's the pro, which is like okay, you're going to enjoy life more. But there's the con of things are not going to be as as efficient. Is there anything else that comes yeah, they- to mind as far as advice to anyone who um, w- would like to make make the move that you made? Oh, did I lose you? A little bit of advice. Oh yeah. So I, I think I already checked off. You know, learning the language, um, understanding the culture, which is having patience. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, we, we're good. We got a little lag. We got we got a little lag. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. No worries. Uh, yeah, so the patience, language barrier as well. Um, and I would guess just your overall personality too as well. So I guess in America, like, you know, I said, like, um, I'm in these groups talking with the Colombians, you know, asking, you know, funny, embarrassing questions. Hey, what do you think about us? Or what you thought about, you know, when you <laughs> first saw me? Or what you thought about, like, you know, me in America, what you automatically thought about me? You know, they, they have this perception that, you know, we're just uh, kind of cold people. You know, we don't smile. You know, the, the way to do business here is that, so say uh, I have a friend recently that purchased a property. I'm very proud of him, a uh, young guy, out in, outside of Bogota. But the uh, the Colombian culture for doing business here is like, you know, in America, you expect, you know, just show up somewhere, sign some papers, do the transaction, there you go. But at first, they, you know, they bring you, kind of court you in a way. It's like, hey, come over here to the property, meet my family, uh, let's sit down and drink, let's get to know each other, just uh, shoot it back and forth for a couple of hours. And, you know, if you get into a good enough conversation, they'll say some stuff like, which is amazing, like, hey, uh, I already trust you. Let's go ahead and sign this. You can pay me after, you know what I mean? And it's just the personality part. It's a very human aspect of, you know, like, hey, I, I met you. You met my fam- you met my family. You seem like a good guy. Um, hey, uh, I trust you. Let's go ahead and do this 100%. So just being, no, you know, a very, uh, just change yourself to be like, yeah. You know, I mean, we're not used to that. It's like, yo, what was this a scam? You know, what you trying to get out of? <laughs> But no, but here, that's what I love about it. Yeah. You can uh, yeah. drop you can drop your guard. You can drop your guard a little bit in the sense of this. You don't have to show, you know, a, a very strong just feature. No, they're going to smile at you. You know, you mean among them. You know what I mean? So it was better just to smile back at them too. Let them know, okay, he's a good guy. That's how they read you as well. So just yeah. coming here with a lighter mindset, you know, going into business, showing them, hey, X, Y, Z. Because like I said, you're going to break down those misconceptions of you just being a foreigner. But, you know, this can't relate to the culture. Just showing them that, hey, I'm a good, open, warm guy too as well. And he just... I have a lot of opportunities just having that, you know, personality showing that award. It was like, hey, I wouldn't trust of another foreigner like you doing this, but because of you being who you are, I had a lot of conversation, a lot of good opportunities as well just having that lesson under my belt. So let's talk about, you know, the business itself. And, you know, what were some of what was like the the biggest kind of negative surprise in, in the business? And then the biggest like positive surprise. I would say the biggest negative surprise was just learning the laws. You know, that just comes with it. You know, I wish I could say, hey, I was that guy that, you know, thought about this perfectly. And I'm here with the mindset of, you know, hey, I'm going to pay somebody to just teach me the laws, like make sure that I make zero mistakes. It's just one of the things I hear. So uh, really just dealing with, you know, employment, dealing with uh, real estate. If you're a foreigner trying to invest here, I highly encourage you to have at least three months extra of your bank accounts uh, readily available. Yeah. You're gonna ask a lot of questions because remember, like you're a foreigner, so you know at the lead at the latest, I'm sorry, at the least, that you can just up and leave, and that's what they're scared about. So just uh that's one of the things too that was a hurdle, you know what I mean? Making sure that you know they wanted my bank extract, you know, that's a personal thing for me. Just, <laughs> exactly. They actually kind of freeze it, they actually freeze at that, you know what I mean? But that's just how it is. So actually, you know, uh gaining trust, finding the actual uh, right people to do business with in Billy Adios, you know, reading the reviews, uh, talking to other foreigners that have done business here as well, picking their brains, having them refer you to XOV because, like I said, it's it's a beautiful place. Once you get in, once you get in and you have your business and everything like that, you're going to love it, but just actually finding out, like, dang, I see why not a lot of uh, regular Colombians have the business, you know what I mean, of their own here because it's a hurdle for them too as well, uh, dealing with that. Just little tricks, you know what I mean? They want everything. They want to see everything, and it's more because you're a for- foreigner, but if you proceed through that, you're going to love it. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. So one of the things that excited me about you and, and when we're speaking is like, this wasn't kind of the, the end goal. The 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 uh, vision is a lot bigger for where you want to head and some of the things that, that you have 
uh, planned. And, you know, I, I think that would be something cool to, to share with folks. Yeah, uh, 100%. So, like I said, just going into the business route of moving overseas, being an uh, international uh, entrepreneur is that I want to kind of build a portfolio and showing people that, hey, I could actually manage investments. So, you know, being out here, you know, letting them know, that, hey, I've done this project from point A to point Z and it's doing well and it's trending great. Just let people know, that, hey, this is something that I do because I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of people who I just met on the fly, whether they're at the store or at a cigar shop saying the same thing. Hey, I want to invest here. I love it. You know what I mean? I see nothing but people coming in. You know, I just see the market climbing. I want to get a piece of it before the wave gets too hot. And uh, I would just tell people overall that, you know, I'm sorry. I lost count. I'm sorry. I lost count of the question. I was, I was going in so deep. I was just yeah, going yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. No worries. No, no, you're, you're <laughs> I'm excited, Which, you man. Know, that, that, is, that is kind oh. of the vision is, yeah. you know, still yeah. – another international investor in Canada. And so like, you're looking at this as it's a piece of the overall portfolio. You're going to have kind of a, a lot of international deals. The reason I, I wanted you to share that is that, you know, I, I think that more than ever, it's something that people need to be investing in. You know, I, I think it, it can't, you can't sleep on the fact that um, we're not only borrowing trillions in the U S but we're borrowing just to be able to pay the interest on what we're borrowing. So now like that is like, you know, if it, it were anything else, it would be completely bankrupt. Like nobody's going to let you borrow just to be able to pay the interest. And now yeah. you can't pay the, you couldn't pay afford to pay the interest on that. You can't afford to pay the additional interest. Um, and so it, it is a, just a, a place where it's like, Hey, that could work out. Maybe borrowing to pay your interest. Okay. And or more to pay that interest and have more of one. Maybe that, maybe somehow that that's going to work. But I think it's wise to have some diversification. And so, you know, I think that, that what you're talking about is, is really cool as far as uh, just uh, having that as not only a part of what you're doing, but allowing other people to uh, invest in the deals and, and and all that. So I think that's a, a really great place to to end this one. Um, you know, we've got a, um, a, a, a call that's going to come up on our next webinar in the Patreon. We're going to have Antonio, and we're going to basically he's going he's agreed to to go full open kimono <laughs> and talk about 100%, 100%. Uh, the business the numbers behind it, you know, we didn't want all of that just on YouTube for everybody to get access to. So um, if, if you are that, that will be up soon for y'all to register for that. So we'll have him on and you can come with your questions, whether it is some things we talked about today, go digging more into uh, lifestyle, whether it's digging more into uh, the, the the current business, digging more into what it looks like to invest in other uh, businesses and real estate and, and all of that. Um, so we'll have that as more of an intimate thing. If you're interested in that, definitely pop into the Patreon. That'll be available even at the $25. So even if you want to just join, get access to this information and, and pop back out, that's totally cool. I think it's going to be really, really valuable. I know just from talking to Antonio, just the strategies of like, if you're looking to do a business, like how do you do the marketing of that business? I can tell you, he's killed it. <laughs> uh, you know, that place yeah. is packed. That place is always pat getting employees manage it like the other thing that i can say he has never made i've gone there a bunch of times he's never made my food my shake any of that he's got employees no, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, all, all the work is being done he gets to just hang out pop out network uh and then even just connecting with other other people in a, in a very short period of time i mean y'all heard his very first just trip was just in 2022 and, and so one of the things that he did res recently, which was cool, was had a, a networking event and, and had over 50 uh, expats and nomads come in and, and get to network with them. And then just the opportunities and, and things that, that happen with that. So we are really uh, excited that he has um, um, shared that he's willing to, to kind of open that up as long as it's kind of an intimate group. Uh, so. Be sure to to sign up for that. It's going to be really, really valuable if you're looking if you're looking to do uh, international business. And I think this is like the new face of international business, and and why I think it's so valuable to have these conversations. It doesn't have to be that you're coming in and doing doing this 
uh, multinational corporate deal or, or that kind of thing. Or it, it doesn't even have to be, you know, like my hotel deal. It could really be like, okay, I'm going in like the same kind of small business deals that we do in the U.S. you can do in these uh, other countries. And so I think uh, this is just a really great example of that. And um um, I'm, I'm excited for y'all to join us. So thank y'all for popping in. Antonio, thanks for popping in and look forward to, to digging you, in you. more on the next one. Hey, uh, Ace Chapman, can I just say one more thing just to wrap up my point Absolutely. that I happened earlier? I'm sorry. Absolutely, man. But just getting back to your point, uh, there's a growing sense of urgency for Americans to look the ways to diversify their portfolio. And it's due with the way, you know, our markets are trending. If you're a guy that's interested, obviously, within investing or doing anything market or financially related, you pay attention to, you know, what's happening around the world and what's specifically happening to our dollar as well. I moved here around 2022. At the top, the Colombian peso was a little bit over five to one. It tracked all the way down to 3.8 right now. This current, I think the lowest is going around uh, like 3.6 to 5. Yeah, so you know what I mean? So it's just a sense of urgency as well. If you're a guy that's, you know, interested, you know, making his future right, setting his uh, seeds and setting his future generations up at the right point, anybody who's great at the market know how to predict it when it's, you know, it's trending, not when it's at the top, when it's so obvious. You know, you're seeing growing record amounts of uh, Americans getting second citizenship passports, trying to find out, like, hey, I'm paying attention to the way they're treating my money, and I'm paying attention to the way geopolitical uh, things are happening around the world. I'm not saying that, you know, it's over for America, but, you know, it's you will be a fool to not have a no head. You got to pay attention you know, to the just, sign. You know what I mean? 100%. <laughs> so, yeah, I wanted to look back on that point as well as we got back to it. But that's what really inspired me. Like I said, just seeing a, seeing above the horizons. Like, hey, not everything's uh, trending in in our uh, favor. So, you know, it's a sense of urgency to go ahead and just find another way, another currency that's trending like, you know, Colombia is doing. So it sucks if you're making USD here because you're seeing your money get weaker. But as well, if you're hedging it and making Colombian pesos here, you're seeing that, wow, my money is actually expanding. Yep. So that's one of the reasons why exactly. making investments like it's easier. And that's why, you know, people say, oh, well, inflation isn't that bad. It's just 8%. It's like, oh, you haven't been to other countries. Because that's how you really yeah, determine yeah, yeah. how <laughs> weaker is the dollar to that. And like, it's almost in half, like forget 8%. And, and that's yes. where yes. you really can, can measure it. Um, and so, and it, it's a very dangerous place. And, you know, obviously it opens up to some very deep conversations, but for us to be able to do business just as a country in these other places, it basically means now that trillion that we already borrowed that makes our money worth less because that expanded the amount of supply, we've got to pay yeah. interest for that. So it guarantees we got to borrow more and when we go to do business in these other countries and get the supplies and, and everything, because we don't even manufacture anything anymore, it basically means that that trillion is worth half of what it was when we got the last trillion. So now oh, we got yeah. to borrow even more. And this is no. the spiral. That, that is the, the spiral. It doesn't happen instantly. But, you know, I'm the money that I make overseas, it sits in overseas currency and overseas account. I would mm -hmm. not. I would not trade that currency for dollars uh, if they paid me. They have to pay me literally double <laughs> to trade that into, into that. So that is a really, really great point, Antonio. And we just have so many more of those. That's why I was like, we can just go on and on. And, and I'm yeah. sure that's when we'll, we'll, we'll be able to just go really, really deep on, on some of these concepts that I think are going to help. Uh, a, a lot of folks who are uh, definitely interested. So thank you. That that was a great, that's that's the point to that's end on. Yes, <laughs> yeah, there you go. I want to do that for you, man. Like anything else. <laughs> it, I guess the other thing the kids like, they teach us to diversify in everything. It's like, oh man, you got to diversify. You can't put all your eggs in one basket, blah, blah, blah. But then for your currency, they're like, oh no, but like that one, like oh, yeah, you yeah, got to yeah. diversify that. Stay here, stay here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, diversify that. And I, I think here, your, yeah. your other point, which is really key, is that more people than ever are, are getting businesses overseas, are doing, are getting second citizenships and residencies and, and all of that. And bottom line is they're making it tougher and tougher um, to for people that like, you know, they're, they're, that are trying to get rid of their citizenship. And so that's the first kind of thing. And, you know, I'm not even saying anybody should do that. But the fact that they are making that so difficult is a sign that the next thing is going to be making it difficult for people to just 
start to diversify and have these overseas assets. Mm -hmm. and they, they have already started to make that really tough, just getting an overseas bank account, uh, a lot of different things that, that um, you know, we'll, we'll be able to talk about. But, you know, once they see, you know, they, they got their fattened cows that they're able to, to um, make money off of. And, you know, all of a sudden the cows grow wings and they, they're they able to fly. You better believe like the more cows that start leaving, they're going to either yep. flip, flip the wings or put a, a <laughs> fence. Like, hey, we, we can't let our cows keep leaving now. Yeah, no not everybody can leave. Not everybody is going to let their cows home. keep leaving. And you are the fattened cow. All right. All right. Well, <laughs> Thank Antonio. You, Thank you so much for taking yeah, some time, man. I, I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having uh, me. People are going to, to really appreciate this.